the probability of XRP running hard is increasing. On a short term, we see that it's doing something which is close to a breakout and a move. And that particular move makes a reversal pattern on a weekly, which is like a macro change. And look at the RSI. It's about to break higher. That can lead towards a price movement because the first move which you see here is going to give you the ability to break towards 0 0.5, 0 0.6, which is the resistance here. And this double bottom here has the ability to push you through that. Once you clear that level, the next first range of big resistance, which you're going to eye, is going to be $6. Now, yes, $3.54. People are going to take some profits, but you may most likely see the price running towards $6, $7 range. Now, that may not be like huge change. But if you actually look at the wave structure and kind of put this in, being a little bit conservative, you can say, okay, maybe it's going towards $4 first and then a drop to $1.6, $1.7 and bounce. So this is a big possibility now. Are you actually trying to price this in because the market is changing? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are a lot to discuss, but you need to understand there are certain coins which are moving and they do have higher correlations. So if you are in the market again, make sure you do understand all these narratives. This is the Scientific Investor Family, where the normal retail guys learn how to become the top 10% of the world. Now, we are looking in the market and we do understand like, okay, yes, XRP is having the move, the volume is still there, it's not bad. But what we are looking at is like, okay, Bitcoin is not moving much, altcoin market is not moving much, and the dominance is trying to float around. If the, we get a bounce, that's great. But right now, what you need to focus on is to see like where the money is coming from. If you don't see the entire altcoin market moving and you still see XRP moving, you need to first ask that question where the money is coming from. And you see BDC move towards the exchanges. Then you go look at Ether moving towards the exchanges and you're like, okay, there are still a lot of it moving to exchange. And then you go look at like how much new money is entering to the market considering the actual market cap, it's not huge, but still these moving towards the exchanges is not bad because on the demand side, you see just below 2 billion a day coming in. Total flows in which 1.4 actually went to crypto exchanges. So now you are looking at the possibility of a breakout in XRP or it is at that verge, whether you are trying to break higher. Agreed? Now, when you look at that and then you go into various different assets to compare what's happening, you see XRP is literally doing a major move. Now, you can go on a weekly chart and ask that question to yourself like, okay, is this a double bottom? If that is a double bottom, then this is a huge possibility. You are going to eye XRP moving higher like this crazy moves. Last time, if you remember, we had 10x move, then another 10x move, then a 30x move. So when you go into this one, trying to compare how other altcoins moved, and XRP moved in comparison. Wave one, we didn't do anything. We talked about that. Now here in this cycle, wave one, we did participate. That's a huge thing. Because in wave two, here, you see a huge move. And in comparison here to the ratio, it does show that this time the move in wave two is going to be bigger. And that's one of the reason why I say, like keep this in mind that we may go big numbers. A lot of people would be looking at this and saying, no, 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 no. I don't think that is going to happen. But if you actually take in any assets which you want and look at how short-term fluctuations work, now you can just take some averages here. When you use the FIB, you can see like, okay, this time it went just below 2.618. And after that, when you take it, you see like, okay, it went above 4.23. Great. Then the SEC volatility came in. Even considering that volatility, you see the price went close towards 3.618. So if you take that average fluctuation and say like, okay, this is the dead end here, we are reversing. Then what you're looking at is the next big move towards $6.
can be 6.7, 8, you know, you name it. But you get the point. As you break through, because we have actually seen XRP doing this kind of trend even before. Just the difference is this time it's been longer because the total run up in some of the crypto assets were bigger and the general market sentiment changed. So when you are looking at similar stuff repeating historically, we would more aligned towards saying, okay, there is a huge possibility this asset is going to run because highly correlated assets for XRP, if we go look at it, is XLM. You can agree on that point. And then when you come look at that on a weekly, you see like there is a huge possibility it is starting to break higher. And if that's happening and you see price action happening in these assets, there is a huge possibility these correlated assets, this set of correlated assets is going to run higher. And imagine XRP is going to do this repeated stuff. We are not saying this time with all this utility, it's going to be much higher. We're just saying, okay, let's be conservative, right? 10x from here, you come towards $4. Uh-huh. But we actually saw in short-term fluctuation, the possibility is towards $6 to $7. We are being conservative. Then we drop 60, 70 percentage and we make a bottom. From there, another 10x, you come here. Right? You then correct another 70, 75 percentage and then move higher. Now, we have actually noticed that wave three for other assets is the smallest, which is usually the case because when you actually look at the total fluctuation, it is the smallest. But for XRP, it is not the smallest. And right? you go look at the history and you understand like, okay, that was 30X when the entire wave two, you can account like 60 and 80X here and the wave one was nothing. So it was not the smallest. You literally did not get wave one there and you got wave three as big one. But this time around, XRP did participate in wave one. So we may get wave two and wave three in proper structure aligning with the market situation because we are kind of moving with the market. There is no denying that XRP is moving with the market. And right now, other coins are down like 90 five percentage when they have moved like this and you come to xrp and look like okay 82 percentage it's not great but it's better than being 95 percentage down now 95 percentage down for xrp means you are looking at the price of 0.1 you get that idea right we are not there now when you take that into account and say like okay next book move is going to be the big move you are literally looking at something way bigger than your actual wave one. So now when you come here and plot that thought process here, you are like, okay, we are going higher. There is no denying the fact that that is coming. And a lot of different coins are getting volume and they are slowly trying to move back higher. It's not only XRP, there is a lot of other coins trying to break through, but a lot of them moving right now are not breaking higher. They are below a massive resistance and they need to break that. So for example, XRP, as we talked, is just at that point where we need a confirmation. Now this is on a daily, right? You go zoom in and look at this and it's like, okay, it's a daily chart. So you need to see a daily close and then another open. So now if you actually remove this to see the clarity, like where we are opening the next day, it is at that range where you have just broken high. And now you can actually say like, okay, that's really hard to take out as a breakout because if you take that as a region, you can still say there is standard deviation as a possibility. So you need to see one more day, which is breaking high and then it is confirmed breakout. But when you're on a weekly, you do not have to go on that perspective because it's already showing you a big possibility of a double bottom happening. That for me is like, okay, the price is doing something really big here. And if that's breaking higher, that's like a major reversal, which we are eyeing it. To get clarity on that, you can literally go on, check the momentum. You see the momentum shifting. You can look at how the momentum is varying. Bulls versus bear in terms of the momentum to the downside and number of days. It's changing here. Great. Then you go look at the line chart to see whether we are really getting a possible double bottom here. So if you are a technical guy looking at this, you would actually argue there is a possibility we are making a double bottom, right? Now, 
on the same chart when you zoom out to see the price fluctuation you will agree that there is a huge possibility of a cup and a handle pattern which measured move for which is actually like super big it is 10x after the break so here that's like 1.6 dollars 10x is like 16 dollars for you to move from there great then you come on to the rsi to see whether the strength is agreeing with that and you zoom in and see like okay we are kind of close to the breakout or we are breaking higher right you just try to connect these and see where we are yeah we are at that verge of breakout daily close and next day opening day is giving us more clue that we may have the tendency to go higher but yes the market sentiment has not changed you're still here bitcoin is still ranging here which is not a great thing because you want to see this range breaking to the upside because if not the you know the banning kind of stuff going towards the mining the electricity cost that narrative is not good for bitcoin or ether but for any coins which are you know in environmentally friendly sustainable and having massive utility they are going to survive so then comes the question like okay what does the erc20 tokens have in future no one knows but if this is like all of them are actually moving into pos from the ether and they are going to get attacked that's not going to be easier because as we just thought about the highly correlated assets are in the market and we see like some of them are breaking higher like xlm is do doing that right now so when you compare it with xrp you do see like okay they move in tandem and last cycle they didn't do here anything this cycle they did something so what we are eyeing at is a major reversal and that reversal is after a bullish pennant here. So you can deny that it can happen or you can look at the possibility of how high this can actually go because in the market you see there is a lot happening and especially when you go look at Bitcoin and the short term move on the fluctuations in terms of the percentage of change you see short term is increasing. It's a little bit but it's increasing. Medium term is decreasing and long term guys is increasing. So now the short term move is aligning with the long term move, which is actually a bullish factor in my opinion. So we do need to see the price breaking higher or else Bitcoin is going to come to 25k and slow down. And you see a lot of all coins popping. But when Bitcoin slows down here, it's going to slow down the entire market or else you will have to go to that maximal side of XRP saying everything is going to go to zero and money is going to come to XRP. I don't think that's going to be the case because not everyone understands the fundamental and not everyone is realistic about the asset. Great. So when you are here in the market and you are looking at the fundamentals like, okay, things are changing, things are evolving. Here we see like XRP library and dragon all of these are you know kind of sued by the sec and all of them are moving i'm like that's actually a good stuff to see when ether is not moving bitcoin is not moving much when these coins are moving especially xrp with that volume it really is something which you have to take a note of now lightning network why bitcoin is not moving utility is not really there you look at this and i'm like okay the usage is going down why is that if you learn about how things work, in my opinion, in my understanding, you need to create payment channels. And these payment channels is not one. If you are going to do multiple transactions with a lot of different people, you now literally have to create different channels. Starbucks for your coffee. They, then, you know, your MACD if you are like that. And, you know, similar different channels. To fund these channels, you need to first move money out of the actual Bitcoin network to the Lightning network to scale your transaction, to reduce your transfer fees, give you the fast transfer rate. It is a different network or kind of, you know, outside the main net. So to fund these, you still have to move Bitcoin from the main net towards that outside wallets and keep money there. It's like pre-funded account and I'm like, why would you do that pre-funded Nostro Vostro kind of stuff here in the crypto market, right? So basically, it does not incentivize you to have a lot of transactions. If you just have one coffee shop to pay on a daily basis, that's okay. But you're not actually moving millions for that coffee, basically, right? So the use case does matter. Utility does matter. And when we see a move towards crypto mining could hinder US ability to battle climate change, I'm like, 
Okay, that may not be completely correct, but whatever, the narrative is launching towards that. When you see these kind of stuff happening, you are like looking at the leaders, right? And as Ripple, Tony actually highlights here, he's criticizing the ACC for what they are trying to do. The level of information which Gary actually has, we all know that he's an MIT professor and previously he was explaining this perfectly. But right now when he's here, he's not doing that. Why? Ah, there's a lot of conflict of interest possibly, right? That's a huge step in my opinion. And I'm like, okay, that can literally mean they can slow down some of these assets so that their Wall Street partners get on board, they prepare the infrastructure, and then they start taking a lot of benefits, not the retailers. So they don't want the big whales or institutions to go into Binance and other institutions. They want the fidelity, you know, uh, these kind of big institutions to set up their crypto infrastructure and then invite all these guys. So they make money, right? So they don't want to see a new guy like CZ Binance coming out and you know bursting through the top 10, top 20 richest people in the world. You know, they don't really want to see that. So now, if you are here in the market trying to make some space for you financially, make sure you are in different assets and make sure you're not in highly correlated assets. And if you're already there, do know your targets and take your profits. And when the market moves like this, at that point, don't say the market is going even higher, I'll take the profits afterwards. Take your profits as you go higher, average to the upside. When you buy, average to the downside. When you sell, average to the upside. This works in long run so that you don't get the absolute top agreed, but you don't miss the major move and you're still way above the average move of that market. If the market is moving 100x and you still have 100x or 80x, that's not bad. So you need to ask that question, how high you are gonna go? For XRP, it's showing it's going to be massive, right? Now, we actually checked a lot of different stuff and what we are gonna try and do this time is to actually see like how this varies. Different assets have different correlation. And once you understand that, you are looking at the macro. If you have patience, what you are looking at is a monthly chart. That's the best way to look at it. Remove all these and zoom in a little bit on a monthly. What you are observing here on XRP right now is a major shift. If you get to close above the previous level here, you are literally raising two months of price fluctuation. You are putting in a new high for the two months and showing there is a possible move to the upside. So literally, that can ignite the next run up. So if you are participating in this one, hit that like and subscribe button. We will follow up on the price updates and see what the price action is showing us on a short term. Because when you go in, look at the short term, you know, we will never deny the fact that in a short term price move, XRP is starting to look good. It is slowly trending higher. It had bullish patterns. We talked about that before, how the price was breaking through. And now it acts like, okay, if we break this level, the next one is here. 0.4. This is short term scenario, you understand that? And the next is here. Now, if you look at the pattern side of this, you're saying, okay, this is the area which we are breaking. And once we break that, your measured move is going to be like this, 45 percentage. So keep your mind steady, focus on the price and targets. If you're trading, don't leverage. So that's it for today, guys. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye for now.